It is the way of nature to nurture all life. At the beginning of last century, humans started to become aware of the dangers inherent in modern agricultural practices. A particular challenge was maintaining long-term soil fertility. American soil scientist Franklin Hiram King, after a visit to East Asia, wrote the classic Farmers of 40 Centuries. In it, he marveled at the charm, wisdom, and vitality of farming in China. He noted that after 4,000 years, the soil remained fertile, safe in the hands of the country's hardworking and intelligent organic farmers. These ancient layered fields are the product of a practice known as carving wood to ration water. The water, as it passes around the mountains, flows from the main channels into branch channels, and hence into each terrace through the indentations in the locks. The system ensures that every level of the terrace, however high, receives sufficient water. The ethnic Hani people have been nurturing this exquisite landscape for over 1,300 years. By opening up fields in the mountains and gathering water, they have been able to cultivate rice in the most unlikely of places. The beginning of the eighth lunar month is the Hani's traditional new rice festival, when the rice harvest begins. As they taste the new rice, they honor their families and pray for the sun and moon to shine on earth for all time. The average per capita area of arable land worldwide is less than a third of a hectare, but here, 11,000 hectares of terraces support nearly 340,000 people, which means three one-hundredths of a hectare feeds each person. A fruit of human ingenuity in successfully harnessing nature, this spectacular landscape has been listed as a World Heritage Site. In this ethnic Miao village in Qiandongnan on the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau, Wang Ermei's excited footsteps can be heard clearly above the drizzle. Today, Wang has received her long awaited letter of admission from the Guizhou University College of Fine Arts. The family decide to hold a traditional banquet to celebrate. The ingredients all come from their own fields. They find everything they need on the paddy terraces. The fish and shrimps are farmed in the water and the chickens and ducks in the fields.
By working with nature, they have created a vigorous micro-ecosystem. The rice, fish, duck system, passed down among the Miao people for thousands of years, has been identified as one of the globally important agricultural heritage systems. Before she leaves the mountains, Wang Ermei wants to capture the beautiful scenery of her home in a painting. Her parents put some newly harvested rice in her suitcase. This is a meow way of wishing a family member good luck on a long journey. To the sound of the Lu Shong, she bids farewell to her childhood home. In the course of 5,000 years, Chinese civilization has nurtured a deep love for and appreciation of nature. It has also given rise to a philosophy of natural balance. The beach being monitored by Zhou Binxin was an area of connected fish ponds two years ago. Zhou was brought in as part of a professional ecological restoration team after the local authorities launched a project to return the ponds to forest. This area is about 然后肩瓣海绵、木兰、还有桐花树等十余个品种会在这里面去生存。Ecological restoration is injecting fresh vitality into the remote and fragile coastline. The mangroves are taking root and growing. The marine organisms are breeding and multiplying. And various birds are migrating here to feed. Mangroves belong to the family of marine woody plants. This is an important area for marine life to migrate and propagate. The mangrove trees, popularly known as coast guards, serve to solidify the land, protect the shore, and purify the seawater. Once the ecological restoration is complete, these mudflats will be connected to the nearby Dongjai Port Nature Reserve. 更多年以后，希望它能长成呃真正的海上森林的一个生态系统的状态，成为真正的一个人与动植物和谐共生的一个家园。Dongjai Port Nature Reserve is home to 35 species of mangroves, 115 of mollusks, 119 of fish, 70 of crabs, 40 of shrimps and 220 of birds, all within an area of 3,000 hectares. Together, this multitude of wildlife resources forms a complete biological chain. As a stable ecosystem, it shelters the coastline of Hainan Island.
The Beilun River estuary in Guangxi, 300 kilometers away from Dongjai port, also has a mangrove forest, this one covering 1,300 hectares. Here, a coastal habitat restoration project has been ongoing for 20 years. It has taken eight years for the dwarf eelgrass planted on the seagrass bed to establish itself. The lush bed of seagrass is a vast gene bank of marine life. The number of species has increased fivefold from when the seagrass was scarce. Among the creatures that have returned is the horseshoe crab. China's coastal ecosystem restoration project has been underway for many years. The 14th five-year plan for marine ecology and environment protection set out a vision for key coastal bays to have clear water, clean beaches, a multitude of fish and seagulls, and harmonious coexistence between humans and sea by 2035. A local folk song describes the traditional poverty experienced by the village of Huang Xiao Ling in this way. Huang Xiao Ling, higher than high. Cold water, deep valley, poor harvest. Mountain grass and wild vegetables for the autumn, six months of potatoes, and six of buckwheat. But even the poorest mountainous areas have some unique natural advantages. The area is the location of the Wuliang Mountain and Ailao Mountain National Nature Reserve. Here, the biological resources are richer than in any other place on the same latitude on Earth. Ten years ago, the villagers of Huang Xiao Ling gave up their traditional farming, stopped leveling the hills to create fields, and set about restoring the natural forests by planting a mixture of cherry, apple, pear, and walnut trees. They have made Huang Xiao Ling famous as a producer of fruits and flowers. The wild mushrooms picked by the villagers in Huang Xiao Ling are always the first products to sell out at the market. The tall trees that were once regarded as potential house beams and firewood are now supporting a forest-based economy. The villagers have diversified their income by producing free-range chickens, wild mushrooms, and herbal medicines in the forest. Thanks to the biodiversity dividend, everyone in Huang Xiao Ling village is living in a spacious residence. Today, over half of global GDP, around 44 trillion U.S. dollars, is derived from natural resources. This highlights the absolute necessity for humans to slow climate change and reduce the occurrence of natural disasters.
Yoyu County in Shanxi lies in the eastern part of the Maowusu Desert. Maowusu comes from a Mongolian word meaning land hard to grow vegetation. For the past few generations, people in Yoyu have been planting forests. Thanks to the addition of 100 million trees, the area of green has advanced 300 kilometers westward. Ling Wu in Ningxia lies in the western part of the Maowusu Desert. In the course of 30 years, 40,000 hectares of sand here have been turned into forest. Almost 70,000 hectares of quicksand have been brought under control, and the area of green has been extended dozens of kilometers eastward. Yan'an, at the southern end of the Maowusu Desert, was once one of the most ecologically fragile places in China. But in recent times, it has returned hundreds of thousands of hectares of farmland to forests. Today, on 37,000 square kilometers, there are forests created by aerial seeding 60 years ago and the three North Shelter Belt Forest 40 years ago, as well as trees planted in the Natural Forest Protection Project and the Returning Farmland to Forest Program of 20 years ago. These forests planted at different times are now fully connected, with the result that Shanxi's area of green extends 400 kilometers northward. From Youyou in the east to Lingwu in the west and Yan'an in the south, a vast area of green has been created that has effectively pushed back over 10,000 square kilometers of sand. What was once a vast desert is now an oasis. The 30 million hectares of three north shelter belt forests connecting northwestern, northern, and northeastern China acts as a wind and sand break. It also conserves water sources and regulates the climate. Green is the color of life. China has been working for decades to turn the land to green. With forest coverage increasing from 12.7% in the early 1970s to 23.04% in 2020, it has achieved the largest net forest growth in the world. Is China's Sahanba a forestation community? Please join me in welcoming their representative, Madam Chin Ya Xian, to the stage. Sahanba in Hebei province is the world's largest man-made forest. It was awarded the title Champion of the Earth, the United Nations' highest environmental award. It serves as a role model for global environmental governance. Data from NASA reveals that in the past 20 years, China has been responsible for over a quarter of the planet's greening. At the same time, China's share of global GDP has increased from 3% 40 years ago to over 16%. The country's economic growth and green growth are complementing each other. Combustion is a chemical reaction that humans have for a long time used as a source of energy. However, the spillage from inefficient energy conversion has consistently caused damage to the environment.
这个温培养温度是多少？培养温度是。The tiny organisms in this container are diatoms, among the oldest plant life on Earth. Scientists at the Institute of Botany under the CAS are using these tiny green plants to study photosynthesis, an energy conversion process that has existed naturally for billions of years. If their research succeeds, human beings will be able to simulate photosynthesis artificially by making use of the endless supply of solar energy, and in this way, reduce their dependence on petrochemicals as an energy source. At the end of 2020, China declared that it was aiming for its CO2 emissions to peak by 2030, and for carbon neutrality to be achieved by 2060. Over the past 30 years, Chen Shi Chong has been traveling among the mountains and rivers of South and Southwest China in the hope of seeing a dream come true. During its brief, week-long life, a butterfly lights up the world. To Chinese people, the butterfly is a symbol of beauty and grace. Having found no trace of a vagrant butterfly in Guangxi, Chen heads to Hainan. Jian Fengling, the largest and best preserved tropical virgin forest in China, is an ideal habitat for butterflies. On the leaf of a homilium plant, Chen sees a butterfly egg. He decides to take the egg back to Guangzhou to identify it. The butterfly egg hatches and the larva begins to develop. After the fifth instar, it pupates. Chin is prepared to stay up all night waiting for the butterfly to emerge. The transformation finally happens. And the beautiful life emerging from the pupa is the vagrant butterfly Chin Shi Chong has been dreaming of. Jin Shichong releases the vagrant butterfly into its natural habitat on Mount Baiyun. There are 1.1 million species of insects that are known to humans. 
85% of the world's crops depend on insects for pollination. So, insects are a vital biological resource for human food production. However, in the latest edition of China's list of wild animals under state priority conservation, the number of insect species has risen from 21 to 75. Since 2012, China has recorded some remarkable achievements in ecological conservation. Environmental degradation has been contained. The quality of the ecosystem has steadily improved, and the ecosystem's functioning has been enhanced. China has been working steadily to improve its policies and regulations relating to biodiversity. The introduction of special measures, such as strengthening the supervision of the Green Shield Nature Reserves, helps to preserve the natural environment, protect endangered species, and build a national ecological barrier for conserving the green mountains and blue waters. In July 2020, the UN Environment Program sent a message to creative young people around the world seeking their ideas for mitigating climate change and protecting biodiversity. It asked them to submit their proposals with the promise of possible incubation support from the UN's partners. The UN received 6,690 proposals from China. They were formulated by millions of young people between the ages of 15 and 24 who were concerned about the fate of the planet. Their voice may not seem powerful, but it's the voice of China addressing the future of humankind. The Code of Conduct for Environmental Protection sets out the concept of a green life and advocates ecological environmental responsibility. Under the theme of Beautiful China, I am an actor. Numerous activities have been carried out across the country to promote public awareness and encourage the public understanding of ecological civilization. Ecology and economy are inseparable. We protect while developing, and we develop while protecting. The concept of building an ecological civilization in which humans and nature coexist harmoniously is something China has contributed to the whole of humankind. China's sustainable, replicable, and extendable solutions are now being shared by the world. Ecological civilization and building a shared future for all life on Earth. These are beautiful messages addressed by humankind to the future. Earth is our only home, and we must share it with other forms of life. So it's vital that we work together to build a charming and harmonious world for all living things.